Right then guys, how's it going and welcome to the Emirates Stadium, the home of Arsenal Football Club. Now I have been here before on an away day, but today we are heading in there behind the scenes on a stadium tour. So I've done a few stadium tours now, so make sure to check them out on the channel. But for now, let's get in there. Yes guys, welcome to the Emirates Stadium and what a stadium it is. The Emirates was opened not long ago at all in 2006 and is located in North London, just a short distance from their previous stadium, Highbury. As always, before getting started on the tour, I took a look around the outside of the stadium and as you can tell, there was a lot to see. A few years after the opening of the stadium, it underwent something that Arsenal called the Arsenalisation of the Emirates Stadium, which included adding eight large pictures of Arsenal legends linking arms around the stadium, along with photos of other great Arsenal players and favourite moments. Later, they also renamed two nearby bridges after club directors Ken Fryer and Danny Fisman, along with the addition of club legend statues around the stadium, which included Tony Adams, Herbert Chapman, Arsenal's all-time leading goal scorer Thierry Henry, and a few years later again, they also added Dennis Bergkamp. They also have a clock on the outside of the stadium here, but we will talk about that a little bit more later on. Before heading into the stadium, I also had the chance to take a look around the Arsenal Museum. The museum gave some great insight to the history of Arsenal, including the number of name changes they've had as the club actually started off with the name Dial Square before changing to the Royal Arsenal, then Woolwich Arsenal and then finally Arsenal Football Club. There was also a brief history of the Arsenal strip as Chapman, the manager at the time, was shown an image of a red sleeveless jumper over the top of a white cricket shirt which then became the Arsenal strip, as shown here in 1936 FA Cup final against Sheffield. Previous to this, they had worn a black current coloured strip, which they also wore for their final season at Highbury. A part of the museum is dedicated to Arsenal's previous stadium, Highbury, and included original plans of the stadium, along with a photo from 1966, and the centre spot taken from the Highbury pitch. There was also a brief video showing the short distance between the move from Highbury to the Emirates and some highlights from Dennis Bergkamp's testimonial at the Emirates in 2006. There is a section dedicated to Arsene Wenger for his 20 years as manager, showing the number of trophies he achieved in that time, including managing over 100 goal scorers and over 1,000 games for Arsenal. There was also some photos and videos from the 2003-2004 Invincible season, where Arsenal went unbeaten through an entire Premier League season to go and lift the Premier League trophy, as shown here. It's now time to head back down the stairs and through the club shop so we can get started on our stadium tour. This was a self-guided tour so I was provided with a mini iPad that would give me facts and information as I made my way around. We did start off in the car park which was a little bit strange before making our way up to the directors and diamond club entrance. And what an entrance it is, made up almost entirely of marble and it has a plaque which reads opened by Prince Philip Duke of Edinburgh in 2006 along with a golden Arsenal crest on the wall and a number of busts which include Arsene Wenger, Herbert Chapman, Dennis Hillwood, Peter Hillwood and Ken Fryer. Next up, let's head into the director's lounge. Now, I was here at Christmas, so I'm assuming that tree is not here all year round, but take a look at this lounge. It's extremely impressive. I can only imagine what it would be like to be in here on a match day, and I had to head straight out to get my first view of the pitch and the full stadium. With a capacity of over 60,000, I am currently stood in the west stand. To my right we have the clock end. Straight ahead of me we have the east stand and to my left we have north bank. I mean what a view you get from up here in the director's lounge. Heading back inside and one really cool thing that Arsenal Football Club do is the flowers you will see around the director's lounge. Now these are actually changed 
to show the away team colours at each match day. Something very cool that you will find in the Directors' Lounge is this Golden Premier League trophy, which was presented to Arsenal after their 49-game unbeaten streak in the Premier League. Let's head back outside and take a sit down in what must be one of the best seats in the house. Pretty much bang on the halfway line with a perfect view of the pitch. And this gives us the chance to talk about something I mentioned earlier on, which was the clock we spotted outside of the stadium. Now this clock is actually the famous clock from Highbury, which Arsenal brought with them when moving to the Emirates. Now the reason this is outside and there is a new replica clock inside of the stadium is due to the size difference of Highbury and the Emirates. As the Emirates is a much larger stadium, they needed a bigger clock to go with it. After some time to sit down, enjoy the view and rest my legs, it was time to get up and head back inside and make our way up to the Diamond Club. As we step inside the Diamond Club you can see straight away the clock ahead of us and the Diamond Club itself is very old school with wooden furnishings and I do think this is Arsenal wanting to remember and celebrate the past but as we know with the new Emirates Stadium they are still looking to press forward into that new era and this is actually shown perfectly in their latest crest change as the cannon remains within the crest but now flipping forward towards the future. The Diamond Club is invite only and if you are lucky enough to get an invite you'll get yourself a five course meal and of course a fantastic view of the pitch. Now let's head out of here down to the players entrance. Through the doors and the first thing the players see front and centre is the Arsenal crest and just below that there is also a time capsule which was built into the ground during the construction of the Emirates and contains memories from Arsenal through the years and also memories from Highbury and I believe contains items such as Tony Adams's captain's armband. Also in the room there are plenty of other photos of Arsenal through the years. Continuing on through the players entrance towards the changing rooms you can see they've got Arsenal players on either side of the walls and they did give a quick video on the iPad showing the players entering the stadium on a match day and they also encouraged you to get a photo alongside one of the players which I did with Umbamnian. And here we have our first view of the player's tunnel. Now I have to say the layout of this area is actually brilliant as we start off by turning right and heading into the away changing room. So as you can imagine, like most away changing rooms, there is no colour scheme. It's all very plain with white walls and a grey floor. And as you can see up ahead, there are some wooden units with a bench to sit on and a space to hang some claws. Although I will say it's quite spacious compared to some other Premier League away changing rooms that I've been in. And a few extra points to mention, the lighting in here was extremely bright. Is that part of a tactic? I'm not sure. The wooden benches were not particularly comfy to sit on and something I've seen in a few away changing rooms, the bench in the middle was too high, making it difficult to talk and see any teammates sat on the other side. And there is also a TV and a whiteboard on the wall should the away team wish to use them. Let's make our way out of the away changing room and back to the players tunnel. Now as I mentioned I do really like the layout of this area as this time we are going to turn left and head into the home changing room. So straight away you can spot the difference with the Arsenal badge on the walls. The floor in here is grey as well but this floor is non-slip which means the players don't need to worry about wearing their boots in the changing room unlike in the away changing room. To our left we have a warm up cool down area for the players and just in general you can see how much larger this home changing room is compared 
to the away changing room. They have far more facilities in here, which includes a plunge pool for the players to jump in after the game into some freezing cold water to help with recovery. And over on the other side, we have a large physio area for the players as well. In terms of the colour scheme, it's red and white as you would expect with some fantastic golden cannons around the walls as well. As we step into the main changing room area, you can spot it's in a horseshoe shape which makes it far easier for the manager to address all players at once. The units are similar but you get a nice comfy red cushion to sit on when you're in this changing room and you also notice that the bench in the middle is low enough to see and talk to your teammates on the other side. Red and white shirts hung around the room. It, it's a fantastic home changing room. They also have a large screen on the wall with a whiteboard for tactics as well. And I got myself a quick photo with the Mbamliang shirt. Connected to the changing room, we also have the manager's office where maybe they'll invite some staff down early to discuss some tactics or maybe do a debrief at the end of the game. And it also wouldn't be unusual to invite the opposition manager in here after the game as well as I can spot a few wine glasses sat on the side there. It's a nice room, they've decorated with Arsenal photos past and present. And now it is time to make our way out of the home changing room just like the Arsenal players would on a match day as we head towards the tunnel. To our right the away team would also be making their way out as we all head towards the pitch together and I know I say this on every tour I do but it's always by far my favourite part and what a feeling I got stepping out to this pitch in the Emirates. I can only imagine what the players must feel on a match day with the pressure, with the cheering fans. Unfortunately, due to the bad weather, I wasn't able to sit over in the away dugout as I normally like to do, but I was able to take a stand next to the home dugout to see what it's like to be there on a match day and one thing you'll notice with the Arsenal dugouts is there is no roof. When these were built Arsene Wenger said he wanted the full team to feel the same weather conditions as those players out playing on the pitch so if it was chucking it down with rain you weren't able to sit there happy and dry while your teammates were out trying to get the win. Back inside I started to make my way down to the media centre but first taking a quick look at one of the interview rooms. So this is where the players would finish the match, come back through the tunnel and into here to give a post-match interview. At the end of the corridor we head into the media centre which is where the manager will give their post-match press conference. As you can see there's a lot of seats for all the journalists and media to ask any questions or hear how the manager thought the game went. If you did want to hire out this venue to hold your own meeting, you can. It's not very cheap but you can if you want to. And I got a quick picture in the manager's chair before leaving as well. And there you have it, as we make our way outside, that is the end of the tour. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed filming it. And guys, that is it. Fantastic stadium tour. I know it was um, self-guided, but they did have staff around who were really, really friendly, really, really helpful. It was, it was a really good stadium tour. I would definitely suggest anyone to get down here and have a go. Uh, but that is it from me. It's raining. I'm going to head off, um, make sure you check out my other stadium tours on the channel as well. Subscribe if you're new, thank you for watching, drop a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you later.